Hello creatives, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela. For anyone who is new here, I'm a graphic designer and an illustrator. Today, we're going to be illustrating tarot cards because it's October and I thought it would be fun. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks in order to create these. I'm gonna keep it pretty simplistic, so let's dive in. I have my three artboards set up here. You can do this in the settings on the home screen before you start. You can choose how many artboards you want and what size. These are three by five inches. I'm gonna start with adding a layer for each one. I'm on layer one, which is going to be the sun card because the sun card I think is quite important in tarot. I name all of these right off the bat. We also have moon, and the all important Wheel of Fortune. You don't have to be into tarot to do this. I just think it's something that's gonna be quite fun. Shape tool. I'm gonna start with a square just to get our background down. A nice blue. I do not want a stroke. You can null the stroke with this option right here underneath your solid color panel. There is a null, it's basically an empty circle with a red dash line going across. Add a background. I'm gonna duplicate this across by pressing the double pages in the quick selection menu and bringing that over and doing that once again for my third artboard. There we go. You can always add more artboards if you need to. Over here on the left tool panel, there is an artboard option. You can add whatever artboard you want. You can start with an A4, A3, and then change the size from there and customize it. So you don't always have to go back out to the home screen. Put these all in their own separate layers here. All right, we are on the first one, the sun. Now there is something quite fun here that we can try. Let's get our sun shape down. Swap fill for our stroke by this double arrow option over here on the left. Start with a gold color. I may change this later, add it to my swatches. Hold down my touch selector over here, tap and drag to make a perfectly constrained circle. Go to our line options and make sure it is central to everything for the stroke. It's in your properties panel down here. We can increase the size of it, increase it to three. That's much better. I want to have kind of like the solar system around the sun since that is something that is there. Duplicate this by selecting it, pressing the double pages, hold down your touch selector, slide it to a direction until it turns white like this. Tap and drag a corner and it creates a perfectly constrained increase or decrease in size from the center. We can change this stroke style in the properties panel over here from a solid line to a dashed line. I kind of like the look of that. You can change the gap. Let's see, the sun is the 19th card, so the gap's at 19. The dashes, let's see, let's do 11. There we go, 11 seems to work well. Let's repeat the same process. That looks really quite cool. For the sun rays, use our pencil tool with the same color for the stroke. We're not changing that. Oh, my stroke is not a solid line. I was not very fluid. Make sure our stroke line is solid in the properties panel and draw some lines splaying out from the sun. For the outer border of this card, draw a border with the square shape tool. Add two points on either side of each corner, here and here. Point selection tool, select the middle point, delete it. Then we get something that looks like this. And once you have done it once, you don't have to do it again. Make sure it is central here. Hold down my touch selector and nudge it up so it stays within the same spot. Duplicate it and bring it right on over to our next card. Make sure it's in the correct stacking order. That one's gonna be for the moon. Drag and drop it into the next layer. You can do that one more time. And we're off to a really great start here. So for the next item, let's make this a little bit less than four. Let's make it two, so that way it's more of a border and not like the main focal point provides a little bit of a border all throughout the cards. Let's make sure all of these are centered uh, vertically. Now back to the sun card. Let's put in his face. We still have our pencil tool. It's the easiest one to draw with for nice fluid mov movements. I'm going to do a very abstract face here. That's pretty abstract. And you can use whatever color palette you choose. I liked the nice like navy and gold myself but you can do anything you would like give him some nice happy eyebrows he is the sun after all he has a little bit of a cheeky smile <laughs> now the easiest way to do eyes is to draw an unconstrained oval use your point selection tool select either a side point either the left or the right 
and make them into blunt endpoints. There we go, a very easy eye. Duplicate that one across. And you can always use your point selection tool to modify your points wherever you need to. Modify that one. So we have some information to put in here as well. Square shape tool, make a box down here, add two points to our border here on either side of that box, two more. Select the ones we just made and cut them. Delete that. I'm gonna choose a very simple typeface for this. If your on-screen keyboard messes up your viewing angle on your screen and pushes everything out of the way, use your two fingers to pinch and pull the screen back into place, even with the on-screen keyboard visible. It is slightly annoying, but that is how it is. Make this all caps by selecting this option here in the properties panel. Let's put that in our beautiful gold. And instead of Source Sans Pro, which is very basic, I'm gonna do something a little bit more fancy. Allegria is nice. Oh, uh, Kaline is a little bit too much. So let's choose. I chose Juniper Standard. It has really beautiful lines in the font. They go from thick to thin, so it's more of like a serif font. It goes well with the entire look of this. There are some planets in here and there are some symbols. So let's put in the symbols. The symbols for the sun in tarot is literally just a stroke line circle with a fell circle in the center. We'll put those in the corners. Sphere shape tool. Use your touch selector to help you make a perfectly constrained circle and then duplicate it. Hold down your touch selector again, slide to any direction so that way it's a perfectly constrained circle, increasing in size from the center. Flip the fill for the stroke and here is our symbol. I'm gonna group these with this icon here in between the double pages and the lock in the quick selection menu. Pull it into place. There is our sun symbol right there. I'm going to make one more modification here using the line tool. The line tool is nestled under the shape tools on your left tool panel. All I'm going to do is draw a line at a diagonal. You just tap and drag and it creates a line. Increase the stroke to, let's see, two points. Let's see what two points looks like. Two points looks good. Now we're gonna create a radial repeat. It's under the repeat options here. Make sure your line is still selected. And for the repeat, we'll choose radial. Whoa, we went a little nuts. <laughs> That's okay. If you pull this circle right here, there's like a white dot on an inner blue line. Tap on that and drag it into a direction. It pulls them either straight in line or distorts them like so. And then if you pull it out, it increases the circumference or the diameter of it. If you pull it in, it makes the center circle much smaller. So I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna increase the number of repeats with these double arrow sliders here. It may be a little difficult for you guys to see, but there is one here. You can increase the number of repeats all the way around. So I'm gonna increase it to, I think is 19 pushing it, maybe. Let's nudge it into the position that I want it in. It radiates from the sun here. It's one easy way to get a repeat of the same item all the way across in a radius, basically. You can always double tap into this. I'm gonna use my point selection tool and make them longer. And in the properties panel, do a rotation of four degrees, so that way it's a little offset from the sun. Let's do one. There we go, for our stroke weight. That way it's not competing so much. So we have it radiating out. You can take the radial repeat, you can duplicate it on top, Instead of a four degree, we can do a negative four degree, so it's going in the opposite direction. Take our point selection tool, and we can make these a lot smaller. And then we have something that looks like this. And now to make this even simpler, we can take our border that we created, duplicate it on top, go to a layers panel with that border still selected, select our radial, radial repeats by holding down the touch selector, selecting both, and we can create a clipping mask and that will make sure that the radial repeats are not going off of the page. Make sure that your border is the first thing in the stacking order like I have here. Go to your object panel on the right and then make a clipping mask and it will clip it just to the inside of the card only. And there is our sun card. Let's select both the bottom box and the text layer, pull it right on over. Use our align tools to make sure it is perfectly aligned in the center. 
instead of this saying the sun. You can always just double tap in. You don't even have to select the type tool to change the text. You can literally just double tap in and you can change it from there. Realign it to the center. And the boon is very simple. Sphere shape tool or circular shape tool, however you want to call it. Hold down or touch selector, create a con perfectly constrained circle once again. Make sure that it is perfectly aligned centrally, vertically, horizontally. I'm gonna pull it up. It doesn't sit low on the ground. I'm gonna keep the stroke at a two so that way it is nice and light. And then there's a crescent moon in the middle of this. So the easiest way to create that, take this shape, duplicate it twice, offset it, kind of like how you have two rings coming off of each other. Select both of those shapes, go to your pathfinder or your combined shapes. It's called pathfinder on the desktop, but your combined shapes panel over here and the right. And then you're just going to minus friends and it creates a crescent for you. So if we take the outer shape and we select the eye and hide it, you'll see that there's just the crescent left there. And we have our full and crescent moon within this. Oh, I forgot this has rotate canvas now. <laughs> I don't use rotate canvas very much in Illustrator. Let's use our pencil tool and we're gonna create a cute little face on the side. I prefer to just because I think it makes it more visually interesting. So he's going to have a little bit of an eye going like that. Kind of makes him look a little bit more happy. We're gonna do our trick like we did before. Unconstrained oval, let's zoom in each side, turn it into a blunt end point. There is an option here in the quick selection menu. It is going to be the third option there and it turns your points into blunt end points. The second option to the left is going to be your flexible endpoints or workable endpoints, movable endpoints, whatever you want to call them. They're, they're all called similar and it creates a perfect eye. His eye is a little bit too big. We'll make it smaller. Look how cute. The moon is the 18th card. So let's take our type, the moon, duplicate it. We'll bring it all the way up. Double tap in the numbers 18 in Roman numerals. Don't forget to align it. We have the 18th card of the moon. The moon does have some symbolism here. So I'm going to create that using shape tools and the pencil tool. Instead of using the shape tool, I'm gonna use the pen tool. And I'm gonna show you some customized shapes that we can make. Usually with the moon card, there are two towers in here, which makes it an influential card because it's very emotional. The moon makes people emotional. Make flexible endpoints into a shape here. Hold down your touch selector to break your handles. Flip our fill for our stroke. And then this is going to be a thicker stroke. We'll do three, duplicate, and pull it over here. Let's flip it. If you don't know how to flip items on, in Illustrator on the iPad, you just go to your align options panel over here on the right. It looks like a bar graph. And there is flip horizontal and flip vertical right down here in the bottom of the panel. I'm gonna bring it all the way to the edge. There's also, an ocean back here. So we're going to draw an ocean. There's two ways you can do this. You can do this with the pen tool or you can do it with the shape tool. So I'm going to show you with the shape tool because it's a lot more fun. We're going to use our sphere shape tool. Hold down our touch selector, create our shape, duplicate, nudge it over, duplicate, nudge it over. And that's all there is to it. Duplicate all three of these, bring them up and set them on top just like so. Lock the background layer. You, you will thank me later. <laughs> select all of these rings, the shape builder tool. Shape builder is in Illustrator on the iPad. It's under the combined shapes panel here, also known as the pathfinder panel. And it's this top option. You can select it. So let's select it now. Hold down our touch selector and draw away anything you don't want, just like so. Combine them all. Don't forget to convert it to a path so that way it makes a new pathway. And it looks like waves. Very simple, very effective. So I'm gonna draw the ground by just using our pencil tool. Our ocean is in the background and we have our moon card. Now the moon card does have a symbol and it is the Neptune symbols. And while we're at it, let's also add some stars because I think stars just make the card. There is a very easy way to make stars by the way. There's also a star shape tool, but I don't want that type of star. I don't always like a perfect star. So I'm gonna choose the triangle shape tool this time. And I'm going to create a very simple unconstrained triangle, just like this one. Duplicate it, flip it horizontally. We're going to drag it down and I'm going to modify the points ever so slightly. Make a very geometric star, just like this one. Group them together. I'm going to make some small ones and some big ones and just duplicate them across. And for that Neptune symbol that I mentioned before, 
The Neptune symbol is very quite simple. It's a curved line, two more lines, and then triangles. And the symbol for Neptune is basically um, in Greek mythology, I think it's Greek mythology, where um, Neptune was also, also known as Poseidon, the king of the sea. So that is where the symbol comes from. And there's our Neptune symbol. And we have our moon card. And now the Wheel of Fortune. So the Wheel of Fortune is very symbolic. It has a lot of symbols in it. So again, we're gonna start with a circle. They all have very similar themes to them with these major cards, but I'm keeping it very simplistic and very classy. These would be really fascinating to see printed with foil. I think they would look really impressive. Wheel of Fortune is something that is kind of like a big deal in a major card. I'm just gonna nudge this up slightly. Let's do a two point, two point, uh, three point. Let's do a three point stroke. Uh, the Wheel of Fortune is kind of like a compass where it has lots of directional angles all over it with a lot of symbols. Let's start with our directions first. Now, line shape tool. If you hold down your touch selector, it constrains it so that way it makes a perfectly straight line. Radial repeat, and then it gives us our repeat. I don't want so many. I only went eight, two, four, six, and eight. Okay, so that is eight. Try and get it as perfect as possible. Decrease the size of this from the outer corners. I'm gonna make it just slightly smaller than the circle in the center. Let's also remember to align it properly. There is a very simple way to create basically a compass face, if you will. You can do a lot with the radial repeat. There are a lot of symbols in here. So let's see, what is our stroke line weight here. It's 0.67. Let's see if I can bump it to one. Yes, let's bump it to one. And all the symbols are customizable in here. So I'm going to use our um, shape tools and pencil tool to make some of these. And then for the more trickier ones, I'm going to use the pen tool. And I'm going to duplicate the same shapes across wherever I see them. I prefer using the pen tool more often than not for customized shapes, but sometimes the pencil tool is a lot easier to work with. All right, there are all of our symbols. Now, the Wheel of Fortune has lots of different characters in there, but I'm not going to draw every single character. I'm just going to draw some clouds in here because there is like a like light airiness about the Wheel of Fortune. I'm just gonna draw some abstract clouds. There are our tarot cards. So you can use the pencil, the pencil tool, the shape tools, and your repeat options. And don't forget to use your line panel options as well to keep everything in line. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. You can see these over on my Instagram, which is always linked in the description down below. If you're not following me over there, go ahead and follow me there. Also, if any of you want to see all of these exclusively and before anyone else, I have a Patreon, so you can go over and see them at least a day or two before anyone else does. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your post notifications so you know whenever I upload a new video. Typically, it's every Monday. I will see you soon, creatives.